Our topic today is pain transduction. There are four phases of nociception, including transduction, which is the process of converting painful stimuli into electrical signals. This electrical signal or action potential can then travel to the brain by way of first, second, and third order neurons. This is called transmission. When the pain signal reaches the somatosensory cortex of the parietal lobe, the individual becomes consciously aware they are in pain, and this is called perception. The central nervous system has mechanisms to augment or blunt pain signals, and this is called pain modulation. The focus of this video is on nociceptor transduction. Nociceptors or pain receptors are free nerve endings that are capable of generating an action potential when they reach threshold. Different types of stimuli can cause activation of pain pathways by depolarizing the nociceptor and bringing it to threshold. Because many different types of stimuli can activate the nociceptor, nociceptors are referred to as polymodal receptors. Think about different stimuli that can cause pain. Examples might include anything that can cause tissue damage, including mechanical stimuli like trauma, exposure to chemicals, tissue ischemia from lack of oxygen, and temperature extremes. These stimuli ultimately lead to the opening of sodium and calcium ion channels and nociceptors to allow the nociceptor to reach threshold and convert the initial stimulus into an electrical signal that can be sent to the brain. Remember that transduction involves transforming one form of energy into another. Consider your skin being punctured by a nail. This mechanical stimulus bends or stretches the nociceptor membrane and opens mechanically gated ion channels for sodium and calcium. These ions rush into the cell, depolarizing the nociceptor membrane. Also heat above 43 degrees Celsius or 109 degrees Fahrenheit causes painful burning sensations. At these temperatures, heat sensitive ion channels in the nociceptor membrane open to depolarize the nociceptor. Furthermore, cells that have been damaged release various substances that can depolarize the nociceptor. These substances include proteases, which convert the extracellular peptide kininogen into bradykinin. Bradykinin readily binds to bradykinin receptors, which are G protein coupled receptors located on the nociceptor, to cause depolarization. ATP can also be released from damaged cells and close ATP-sensitive potassium channels to cause depolarization. Potassium is high inside cells and is released from damaged cells. This elevated extracellular potassium will directly depolarize the nociceptor and bring it closer to threshold. Lactic acid buildup in the ECF of hardworking muscles will ac acutely increase hydrogen ion concentration in the extracellular fluid surrounding nociceptors. These ions activate ASICs, or acid-sensing ion channels, which open and increase permeability of the nociceptor to sodium and or calcium ions, depolarizing the nociceptor. In case of a bee sting, mast cells are activated and release histamine and serotonin, which cause nociceptors to depolarize. The smallest C fibers are selectively activated by histamine and bring on the sensation of itch. These are called proreceptors. Prostaglandins are released from enzymatic breakdown of inflammatory cell membranes and bind to G protein coupled receptors, which increases cyclic AMP inside nociceptors. Prostaglandins also cause phosphorylation of certain tetrodotoxin resistant sodium channels, which action causes these channels to open at lower membrane potentials, thus sensitizing the nociceptors to make them more readily activated. Other contributors to transduction in nociceptors include calcitonin gene-related peptide, abbreviated CGRP and substance P. Electrical activity of the nociceptors causes the nociceptors to release corresponding amounts of substance P and CGRP, which increases the inflammatory response and causes vasodilation, release of histamine from mast cells, and increased sensitization of neighboring nociceptors. An example of this sensitization is the allodynia, 
one experiences on the skin with just light touch after a sunburn. The substance in peppers that give them their spiciness is known as capsaicin. Capsaicin activates ligand-gated ion calcium and sodium channels by binding to valinoid receptors or VR1 receptors. Heat and acid will also open these same channels, as does the endogenous compound anandamide. Interestingly, mice who have had their VR1 receptors knocked out are able to drink capsaicin solutions as if it's pure water. VR1 receptors have not been found in birds. This finding led to the idea to produce capsaicin laced bird seed to keep squirrels from eating the seed. It was also found that application of capsaicin desensitizes pain fibers and prevents substance P from being released from peripheral and central nerves. For this reason, a capsaicin cream has been developed and is used to treat pain associated with shingles, arthritis, mastectomy, and trigeminal neuralgia. Here now is a summary of pain transduction, which leads to an action potential being transmitted to the brain, where one perceives or becomes consciously aware of the painful sensation. Thanks for watching.